Welcome to Monet Cafe, artistic friends and visitors. I'm artist Susan Jenkins, and I'm very excited about bringing you this new step-by-step -step format, which should make lessons even easier for you. And if you're new here, please subscribe to this channel to keep more art lessons coming your way. Hello, and welcome to Monet Cafe, subscribers and new visitors. I'm excited because this is the first painting that I'm doing of the new year 2021 and I'm excited because I have a lot of new things coming this year and some new ways of teaching that should make it really easy to follow and great for beginners. So let's get started. I'm going to share a little bit more about my supplies and subject matter. I really love this subject matter. It is a field of some wild flowers. I loved the periwinkle color of the flowers. And currently in the Monet Cafe Art Group on Facebook, the theme for this month is fields and flowers. And I am particularly drawn to fields and flowers anyway. So it's a happy subject matter. And I thought something that would be fun to start off the new year. And I have to give credit to one of my patrons provided this reference photo in my Patreon group. And her name is Andrea. Thank you, Andrea. As soon as I saw this photo, I loved it. So I'm going to kind of break down the reference image prior to painting. And also, let me go over some of my supplies that I'm going to use. I am going to be showing you all of the pastels that I'll use. And for my patrons, the videos on Monet Cafe always have free tutorials, but my patrons sometimes get a little bit extra. And if you're not sure Patreon of what Patreon is, it's a place where people can support this channel for $5 a month and get a little extra art instruction and some behind the scenes content. So my patrons will get a uh, color chart of all of the pastels I use, but I will be showing them during the tutorial. Now I haven't used this particular set in a while, I barely used it actually, really. Um, it's a Diane Townsend, let me get the box top. It's a Diane Townsend uh, greens, okay? And they are these big, chunky pastels that are really, really cool. Let me hold it closer. I'll try to take a picture and insert it. And I love these greens. They're very interesting. And I thought the reference photo had some of those interesting greens in it. So I thought I'd play with those a bit. And also, let me leave the reference image up here. I also thought I would use this Sennelier set of 40. I love this little set. Now, Sennelier pastels are very soft. And I have found, personally, the colors are some of the most vibrant that you can get in the pastel uh, brands available. Uh, I mean, look at these reds. These blues actually were some that I used in a painting that was pretty popular here on YouTube. It was a field of blue flowers. And so many people asked me what my blues were. And I, I think quite a few of them were these blues in here. So it's got some really vibrant colors. And I liked these, again, periwinkle blues back here. It also has some nice kind of magenta pink tones in here. And even some little... Um, almost salmon-y color I'm seeing in here somewhere. It even has some nice neutrals. So I may be pulling uh, some from here, some from here, and uh, various other pastels, but I will show them. And again, my patrons, you'll get the color chart. So let me get started. And uh, I'm going to break it down very simply for you so that it's even more easy to follow than previous videos. Yay, I'm excited. Oh, and once again, I wanted to mention that I'm wearing another one of the Love and Faith t-shirts. I love this company. I love the positive messages of hope and encouragement. And also, I always have a clickable link in the About section of the video where you can click and find your own. I have a coupon code in the uh, About section, but they sometimes have coupon codes and have shirts like 60% off. So check it out and share some positivity. All right, now we're getting started. Now let's take a look at this. Typically with landscape paintings, we're going to have values that are darker in the foreground, especially like these foreground grasses. Now upon first inspection, if you're not familiar with painting or how things work with value, we often would just see all of this is all very light. Oh, we see this bright green and we want to go light value, light value everywhere. L light value just means lighter um, on the grayscale, okay? For the difference between white 
and black. Where does it fall? So our darker values are usually like right here in these foreground grasses. Okay, that's really going to give that illusion of these things are up close. And then values gradually get lighter as they recede into the distance. And color also gets a bit more muted. Now we know typical things like, of course, focus gets less and things get smaller in the distance. Um, so that is usually something that people kind of understand pretty easily. But if you can learn these tricks about value, it's really going to improve your painting. Also, uh, vertical elements such as trees, in a landscape are always darker than flat areas as in a field or grasses because the sun it can't shine this way. It's shining from above. So that's just a good thing to keep in mind. But distant trees, if they're even further away, here's a perfect example. This is like a mountain in the background. Now we know these trees are green, but these are most likely the same trees growing on this mountain. Why are they bluish purple? Well, that's because color temperature cools off in the distance and it also gets lighter in value. So see that whatever these trees are on the, feet, on the hill, they are not as dark as this, right? And they're cooler in color temperature, whereas this is warmer. I have one of my videos that's five ways to um, create perspective in your artwork. I believe that's what it's called, but it goes over these five little tips that if you can learn these, it makes your... Um, skills so much better as an artist. All right, so some of the things I really liked about this reference image is this um, rejoicing type of feel of these flowers and their randomness. Look back in here, you see some of these flowers just popping up back here. These are just gonna be hinted at um, in the final painting. I also love the groupings of some of these white flowers, but notice again how out of focus and blurry these things are. So that's just a general idea. Oh, I also love how some of these pink flowers are buried. A lot of things are buried down deep into the grasses. Um, that leads me to one other point here. I've learned over the years um, something that I think I've, I'm getting better at and have gotten bad, better at over the years is something that's so important, which is focal point. That means what is the area of interest in this image? What do you want it to be? And it's usually something that initially drew you to the painting to begin with because we don't want everything to be a focal point. One of the, um, I guess the most amateur thing that happens with a beginning artist is we feel we have to detail everything and your art is going to be much more suggestive interpretive and impressionistic if we can learn to limit our focal points. I did a preliminary painting, which is often good to do before starting a larger piece. This was about an eight by 10, and I decided to keep the focus more about the white and the purplish blue flowers. Here are my pastels. I will be talking about them more as I work, but once again, the Diane Townsend's, the Sennelier 40 half stick set, and some various other pastels. Now here's my setup. I know sometimes I don't scan around like this, but I am using a piece of Fisher 400 pastel paper. I love this sanded surface because it's practically just like UART paper, but it doesn't warp or curl on me. I've had a real problem with UART paper curling. So uh, at Pro Art Panels where I showed is where you can get this paper and it's priced competitively with UART paper. A really great surface. I love it. I am just sketching in a very basic outline to follow because there's not a whole lot other than a bunch of field and flowers. I'm just kind of getting in where these background trees are going to be and I'm using a piece of willow charcoal also called vine charcoal. Charcoal is an excellent material to use when working with soft pastels because it's basically the same product and uh, you can blend your pastels right over this without a problem. I've sped this up just a tad and this video will have a decent amount of real-time footage but it will be um, available on my Patreon page with mostly real-time content. I do have to chop it up a bit with um, minimal speeding it up but uh, just to keep the video from being you know like an hour and a half long so my patrons will get more real time a little bit more commentary but you guys here are going to get plenty of information as well oh i forgot the mountain in the background um there is like a 
uh, a mountain and it's always a good idea to have your mountains kind of curving up on the edges rather than frowning um, drooping off the edges um, and it just makes a more pleasing composition all right so what am i doing now now this is real time I have decided for the underpainting that I'm going to use different values of cool reds. And a cool red, just so you know, leans a little more towards pink. These are the ones that I chose in the middle of this photograph right here. And basically, with these different values, I am doing a value study with the similar color family. So the mountain is darker than the sky the sky is almost always in a landscape painting the lightest thing and i know that mountain is darker than that so i'm giving it kind of that reddish color that's a little bit darker in value now what's the darkest thing it's those trees so i'm going to get the trees and kind of some of the foreground and a little visual path with a darker pastel this is just a darker kind of a neutral purple and I don't need really a super dark pastel like some of the uh, like the eggplant Terry Ludwig. I do end up using that one, I believe, for some of the deeper parts of the tree. But this is just the initial block and stage. So all we're focused on right now is value. Now, while I'm working on the darker areas here, let me talk a little bit about why would I have chosen those colors as an underpainting. By the time you see the end of the painting, you will see an influence of these colors peeking through, and they make for a nice combination with all of the greens. I love to use warmer tones for an underpainting if a scene has primarily green, and pinks and golden colors usually work well for that. Now, these trees that are a little bit further away and behind the, the foreground trees, are I'm going ahead and giving them this dark value even though I will be uh, lightening their value and cooling them off a little bit with color temperature as I work but once again don't get too fussy on this block in stage and don't get frustrated if it looks you know rather um, amateur or kindergartenish looking a lot of people say your painting has to go through an adolescent phase um, before it starts to look like something now what am I doing here I'm using my dark pastel um, to make kind of I know in this painting you saw the one that I did the preliminary I decided to make the path almost go right towards those trees I don't often like to put things in the center uh, but this photograph had them in the center and the horizon line is in an upper third so that's a visually pleasing composition but I thought it would be neat to have these flowers just cascading out of a an idea of a path or a deeper darker value underneath the grasses all right now I've got a little bit of a brighter um, oops I dropped it uh, a little bit of a brighter pastel it's a little bit darker than the mountain um, but uh, it's brighter in color intensity and so I'm just kind of scumbling it in here um, I'm not pressing super hard it just happens to be a pastel that is very vibrant it shows up a lot even without um, giving much pressure and it's a good idea not to have a lot of pressure oh pardon my crazy face there I, I started this after my intro I don't have any makeup on <laughs> I've started doing um, earbuds now so that I can leave the scratchy sound a lot of times I would tell you guys that I can't play the sound of the video because I play music while I paint and often it's always it's copyright music so YouTube will give me a strike if I play that music so now I'm like duh why don't I use earbuds and then it's silent for you guys so you can hear the the pastels actually on the sanded surface which I think sounds so neat so now I've gone with a little bit lighter it's kind of a, a salmony um, getting a little bit more towards an orangey color and I'm getting gradually lighter as the pastels go into the distance and notice I color covered up a little bit of that path um, with some of the red and all of this is going to get blended in and covered up I shouldn't say all of it once again I think you will see the uh, underpainting peeking through by the time I'm done with the painting I like to purposely leave it um, in in little bits of places and not have such a heavy hand that I cover it up so here we go look at that it looks like a mess right but now I'm going to use a technique that will really blend this now I don't often show this in its hardware store format this is pipe foam insulation this is kind of a beat up little piece but it's actually what's used to insulate your pipes 
in colder climates. We don't need that here in Florida. But I literally can just get it at the hardware store. I cut off pieces like you just saw me doing, and it's an excellent blending tool. I use other blending tools, but um, I think originally I learned this from artist Karen Margulis, and she uses it so well. But uh, it works great too. Basically, we're trying to cover up all the white of that paper. Now, one of my goals um, with my patron support, um, I talk about my patrons a lot on my Patreon page. It's how you guys can support me. It's $5 a month, and it really helps make this channel get better, and you guys get some extra content. But one of my goals, a uh, piece of equipment for my studio, is a better easel. You see me holding my easel? It's because I still have a kind of a cheap French easel, and... Um, it wiggles and wobbles when I, um, I'm heavy-handed like something like this. So I always have to kind of grab a hold of it so you're not seeing the image shape. But notice how that just blended in, covered a lot of the white of the paper. Now I do do this in sections so I don't get the dark all over the place. It's okay if it blends kind of um, around a little bit. It doesn't have to be so specific. Um, but uh, when I go to lighter areas, if I have some dark um, on it, I use a different part of the pipe foam insulation or I wipe it off. A lot of times I will start with the lightest part, the sky, but I didn't in this case. So I'm just kind of working around the mountain area, um, kind of behind the trees, and again just keeping this really loose and the end result is a soft, moody, uh, impressionistic feel. I really love this strategy for doing an underpainting. It sets the mood and sets the stage for your painting and you kind of got a little roadmap to work with so it's a fast and easy way to get started. I sped this last part up just a little bit but I think you get the idea of how to do this. All right sometimes I tap my painting just to get some of the pastel dust off. All right, time to get to happy painting. And uh, I love to keep my coffee or tea next to me when I paint. Now you'll probably notice I'm putting all of the colors that I use to the left side of my painting surface. And now I'm getting a dark. I think this one is the Terry Ludwig eggplant. Uh, Terry Ludwig is the manufacturer. See how dark that is? It looks black when it goes on, um, even though it's just a dark purple. And I don't use black often because it's, it's really a flat dead color and um, other dark colored pastels look so much more lively and rich so I'm just getting in you notice how sporadically I'm doing this I mean I do have some rhyme and reason I am giving tree shapes but I'm not drawing a tree I'm still blocking in and just getting that dark value in and this is basically a repeat of when I did the darker value with the purple. You notice how light, once I blended that medium to dark value purple, see how much lighter it got? So this is just kind of reestablishing the darks and um, giving it a little bit more of a deep value, which really helps to create a focal point and uh, interest in the painting. So I'm doing the trees and then I'm going to do the path as well. Same strategy, just kind of giving some, and you know these grasses are gonna be really tall. Um, I won't have a whole lot of field showing. It's mostly all these grasses even going into the distance. It's kind of like one of those photos where you get down on the ground and you take a photo and you can't really see the flatness of the field. You mostly just see tall grasses. So that's kind of the general concept. And here I'm using the blending tool again, but notice I'm blending those background trees to give them a little bit more mood, like they're far away, uh, a little more impressionistic, and uh, it lightens their value a bit. I do use it a little bit on these foreground trees, but I do it with a lighter touch, so it still keeps a darker value. Remember, things closer to you are usually darker in value, so especially vertical things like these trees. So I'm trying to keep that uh, those trees darker than the background trees and I will do this more as I work with color and um, and different values of colors all right same deal okay does it seem like a you know um, ditto I just saw this it's kind of the same thing I'm just blending in this dark path so that it's a little more moody and impressionistic and it's giving a foundation for the green grasses that I'm going to be painting when I just realized that I forgot to blend in the sky, so I cleaned off or, or found a new, new spot on my pipe foam insulation and um, just gently blending it in, once again trying to 
not have all of that creamy colored paper showing through uh, on the Fisher 400 paper. And 400, by the way, when I say Fisher 400 or UART 400, it's just the uh, amount of grit that the paper has. Think of it like hardware store sandpaper. You know, you have 400, 600, 1,000, and uh, 400 is a really nice grit to work on with pastel painting. I thought I'd give a little close-up so that you can see um, maybe a little bit better of how it applies. And uh, now it's time to get started. So let's add some color to this lovely glowing underpainting. And local color just means the color that is in the scene, the color that you see. It's not a complementary color. It's the actual color that you want your final painting to become. So I am applying various greens. You'll see me using, um, mostly right now I'm working dark to light. So I'm using that darker green. It's kind of a forest evergreen, darker green. I'm just uh, still kind of scumbling it into the trees, not making any particular branches or anything at this point. And now I picked up a little bit of a darker blue pastel. I find that the darker values are so much more interesting if you can use a combination of dark colors and not just one color. By the way, this is sped up. Oh, now I have that Terry Ludwig eggplant. I'm reinforcing some of the darker values down towards the roots. And I think I add a little bit more to the foreground grasses. Um, but right now I'm speeding this up just a bit to keep the file size small and for the video not to be like an hour and a half long. I think it's probably going to end up at close to an hour because I have kept a lot of real time. And again, even though this is sped up, it's not sped up so quickly, you know, like in some of the speed videos that you see. And also too, uh, I am still commenting here on the Monet Cafe channel, but in a minute I'm going to add some music and you can enjoy the rest of the painting process and you can really see what I'm doing. Like I said, I'm, I'm showing most of the pastels. That's the Terry Ludwig dark set. It has some nice darks, but it has some nice um, not quite so darks as well. Like this one that I'm using, it's a cooler green that I'm using to uh, gently stroke over these background trees. And what's that that's going to do? It's going to push them back further in the distance. They feel further away because the value is lighter and the color temperature is cooler. Often you'll see me with a pastel. If I use it somewhere, I'll see if I can use it somewhere else. And I knew I liked some of these cooler medium to dark values in some of those deep grasses. Uh, once again, I'll do a little more commentary here and then Monet Cafe, you will see the rest of the video to music. And again, I think you can still see what I'm doing and hopefully recreate the painting. And if you choose to do that, uh, if you're not a patron of mine, share your results in the Monet Cafe art group on Facebook. That's a free resource for you. Lots of people share and chat and communicate together. It's a lot of fun. I decided to grab this. Uh, this is one of the Sennelier 40 half stick set that I just showed there. This uh, a little bit warmer. Uh, a lot of those grasses had some golden tones to them. So I thought I'd make uh, that field a little bit warmer with that. All right, so now enjoy, and patrons, you are going to get more commentary at this point, but keep watching those of you in Monet Cafe because I will be back popping in uh, towards the end and give some more information and feedback.
All right, well, the painting was pretty close to done at this point. I did enjoy this. I really do love these warm underpaintings. Now, can you see how it is peeking through? It's even peeking through the sky, a little bit in the mountains, especially in that middle ground field, and even some around the perimeter and bottom of those uh, tall grasses. So I hope everyone enjoyed that. Monet Cafe subscribers and my patrons, let me know if you like this step-by-step -step format where I'm trying to break it down a little bit more. Here are all of the pastels I used. Once again, my patrons, I'm going to take some good images of this and provide it to you in your Patreon post so you can get a good up-close look at it. Here's the final, oh, what do I name this painting? I think I will call it Hope Lives Here. And this painting will be available in my Etsy shop if you'd like to get it along with my preliminary painting as well. Thanks for joining me. Bless you all. Happy New Year and happy painting.